Okay, so let's talk about the differences between ideal, theoretical, and actual mechanical advantage systems. So here we have a ideal mechanical advantage system set up. We've got our anchor over here. We've got our load. Uh, the red triangles are the pulleys. The blue line is the ropes. And then this green line here is our, um, our prusik our rope capture. So let's do the tension method to start off to figure out our ideal mechanical advantage, what this is. So if we have one unit of input here, we've got to have the same coming out on this other side of this pulley here. So we're going to have one here. So on the other side of this pulley where we've got our rope grabs, we're going to have two units of output there. Let's continue along. Back to our one unit input here. We got one here. We're going to have one coming out 180 degrees on the other side of the pulley. This one is going to travel down um, and meet the two. Okay, for a three to one ideal mechanical advantage. So we know that when we're out in the field and we're going to try to build this mechanical advantage system, um, it's not actually going to be like this. So we can try to whiteboard uh, what we think will happen in the field um, by looking at our pulley uh, efficiencies and trying to calculate that in so we have a better idea of what our actual mechanical advantage would be. So let's do that next. So um, here at Colorado Mountain College and Summit County Rescue Group, we're using the CMC MPD a lot and uh, we have several different varieties of two inch pulleys, um, which are ball bearing pulleys. So we're gonna use a 90% a, a efficiency for the pulleys that we're gonna calculate now. Um, that would be a good average of the, uh, the devices that we're using. So now let's figure out our theoretical mechanical advantage. So we'll come back here once again to our, our input where, where we'll be grabbing onto the rope. So we'll have one unit of input here going around a 90% efficient pulley, okay, so we're gonna lose like 10% efficiency here, you know, due to vibration and uh, friction of the rope running through the sheaves in the pulley there. Okay, so we're gonna lose about 10% here. So as the rope goes around 180 degrees there, we're only gonna come out with 0.9 units, okay? So now we can total these up. So one unit here, 0.9 here. Our output on the other side of this, of this pulley will then be 1.9 um, units of output there. So let's continue along. So we've got our 0.9 units here. Once again, as we go through this 90% uh, efficient pulley, we're gonna lose 10% due to you know, some, some uh, friction and heat and vibration. So we'd have to take 10% uh, of 0.9, so we're gonna get uh, 0.81 um, output on the other side. So this 0.81 will travel down to our 1.9, so we'll be adding those together now for our theoretical mechanical advantage. Okay, so the 1.9 plus the 0.81, basically we're gonna get a 2.7 theoretical mechanical advantage instead of the ideal three to one mechanical advantage. Now what's the actual mechanical advantage? Well, when we get in the field, um, you know, that's the one that's really hard to determine. You know, how old are these pulleys? You know, how well are they performing? Is there some dust or dirt or grit in there? Are we pulling in exactly you know, 180 degree angle on this rope, or are the rope um, haulers maybe pulling out more of this at an angle like that, which would decrease um, our efficiency. So um, we could really only figure that out um, by going into the field with load cells and actually measuring um, what we're getting at the particular time with that certain rope, with those pulleys. So most of the time when we go in the field, we just want to have an idea of what our theoretical mechanical advantage is going to be. 
So let's just do one more example here. And this time, instead of using a high efficiency pulley, um, like a two inch pulley that you would use in a, you know, mount rescue um, with a 11 mil rope, let's, let's say now that these pulleys are gonna be uh, carabiners, okay? So a lot of people talk about, well, if you don't have pulleys, you can use carabiners uh, in the field. Well, testing by different organizations, you know, CMC Rescue, uh, the Rope Lab, Rich Delaney, and others, you know, they're gonna show that uh, pulling through a carabiner is, you know, it's never gonna be more than 50% uh, um, efficient. Sometimes it'll be lower, you know, like 35 to 45% um, efficient. So we're really losing a lot due to uh, friction here. Uh, just to make the math easy, let's just go with a 50% um, efficient carabiner. Uh, maybe you've got the, the DMM revolvers, which is a carabiner that has just a little tiny um, pulley built into the carabiner itself. So here we are, we're gonna start with one unit of uh, input where we're pulling, okay? And now, due to friction through the carabiner, we're gonna lose 50% here, all right? So we're gonna end up with 0.5 units on the other side. So our output here will be 1.5 units. Let's continue along. So our 0.5 going through another carabiner is gonna come out at only 0.25 units. Okay, so this 0.25 will travel down and we'll add that to our 1.5. Okay, so our theoretical mechanical advantage using 50% efficient uh, carabiners like the DMM revolver or something like that is only going to be um, what would that be so uh, a 1.75 to 1 theoretical mechanical advantage so that would be uh, pretty tough. CMC Rescue has done tests with how much the average person can pull on a rope and they found out that uh, in most of their testing one, you know, one person can pull about, you know, about 50, 50 pounds um, comfortably, and that's just a, an average. Um, they say about three people um, pulling on a rope, you know, the, the maximum force they've ever really seen is about, you know, 500 pounds of pulling power, and it's really hard to sustain that. So a lot of times um, we'll go with one person has a, an average pulling um, capacity of about 50, that's really about 50 to 70 um, pounds on average. Before they're gonna say, hey, we need some help. Can we get some other people to pull on the rope? Or um, can we increase the mechanical advantage to make this uh, a little easier to pull? Okay, um, I, help, I hope this helped for you all to understand the difference between uh, ideal, theoretical, and actual mechanical advantage systems.